Tour de France. It's the world's most prestigious and most difficult bicycle race. Of the three foremost races, the others being the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta a España, the Tour de France attracts the world's best riders. Staged for three weeks each July, usually in some 20 day long stages, the Tour typically comprises 20 professional teams of nine riders each and covers some 3,600 kilometers, 2,235 miles, mainly in France, with occasional and brief visits to such countries as Belgium, Italy, Germany, and Spain. This is the World Cup, Super Bowl, and Stanley Cup of bicycle racing. Cyclists from around the world gather in France to compete for the chance to win the prestigious Tour de France trophy and a cash prize of 450,000 euros, or just over $500,000. This is a sport that garners 3.5 million television viewers and over 12 million spectators annually. It's a thrilling sport and is completely free to attend. Over Greg LeMond after 2,000 miles. Unlike LeMond, Vignon... This year... A spectator's sign caused dozens of Tour de France racers to crash. The French authorities were searching for a woman who they said left the scene after a German cyclist crashed into her sign, setting off a pile-up during the first stage of the race. So, how did this happen? The accident happened 45 kilometers from the finish of the first stage of the race on Saturday, June 26, from Brest to Landerneau, when a female spectator on the side of the road held up a big sign which caused the pile-up. The sign was a hello message for the woman's grandparents, CBS Sports reports. She appeared to hold the sign out so it was in the view of cameras, but it blocked part of the road. Footage from the scene shows fallen athletes in a heap of tangled legs and spinning wheels after a German rider, Tony Martin, crashed into the sign along the side of the road before falling. That set off a cascade of collisions in the middle of the peloton, a French word meaning ball or group, that also refers to a cluster of cyclists in the race. The police said that the woman, who was wearing glasses and a yellow jacket, left the scene before investigators arrived. Pierre Yves Toul, the deputy director of cycling with the Amouri Sport Organization, which runs the Tour de France, told Agence France Presse this past weekend that the organization planned to sue the woman. We are doing this so that the tiny minority of people who do this don't spoil the show for everyone, he said. On June 28, the Amouri Sport Organization confirmed that it made a complaint about the woman to the French authorities, but did not immediately respond to a question about the potential lawsuit. The collision was one of two major crashes on the first day of the race, causing injuries that led to the withdrawals of four cyclists. Yasha Sutelin of Germany, Marc Soler of Spain, Cyril Lemoine of France, and Ignatis Konovalovas of Lithuania. After the pileup, Tony Martin was able to stay in the race. His team, Jumbo Visma, said on Twitter on Sunday that all of our riders seem to be okay after the massive and despicable crash. On Instagram, Martin thanked his fans for their support and added a message for all the people next to the road who think that the hashtag Tour de France is a circus. On July 1st, the Tour de France has withdrawn a lawsuit. The local prosecutor, Camille Mianzini, told a news conference that the probe was still ongoing as a second complaint remains. He also said that people injured in the crash could also file lawsuits later. The sign-holding spectator who caused the mass crash on the opening day of the Tour de France has been released from custody and charged by French police, who described her as ashamed and frightened. The authorities want to protect the culprit's identity, but did reveal she is a 31-year-old woman who lives near Landerneau, where the opening stage finished. Having been arrested on June 30th, following the incident on Saturday, she was released on Friday morning, according to AFP, having spent an extra night in custody than was expected. She is charged with two offenses, the first being endangering others through a manifestly deliberate violation of a duty of prudence or safety, and, as a consequence, involuntarily causing injuries that lead to an inability to work for up to three months. Police also called for the spectator not to be lynched on social networks. We are withdrawing our complaint. This story has been blown out of proportion, but we wish to remind everyone of the safety rules of the race, tour director Christian Prudhomme told Reuters. The case will be judged in court in Brest in October and could lead to a fine of up to 1,500 euros. The woman could, however, face further action if any individuals or groups launch their own lawsuits. The race organizers have already withdrawn their threats to sue, but movie star's Marc Soler, who broke both arms and left the race, is considering it. It was just such a 
such a mental moment. I mean, everything was fine. I was actually thinking to myself, this first stage hasn't been that bad. There's been a few crashes, but I've, I've seen worse. And then, um, and then it just kicked off uh, 60, 70 Ks an hour uh, towards the final. And uh, in a split second, there were 50, 60 of us all on the ground. <laughs> so I guess that's, that's bike racing. The sad thing is, it's not the first time it happens. It's not uncommon for Tour de France fans to crowd the roads and inadvertently or even intentionally trip up the competitors. And the rise of spectator selfies over the past decade has compounded that risk. The racers have always contended with unexpected obstacles. In 2011, a car belonging to a news crew clipped a group of riders and sent one of them, Johnny Hugerland of the Netherlands, barreling into a barbed wire fence. In 2018, several cyclists rode into a cloud of police tear gas that had been intended for protesters, stopping the race for about 15 minutes as the riders were treated with eye drops. And in a remarkable sequence of events in 2016, a swarm of spectators caused a television motorbike to stop in the cyclist's path during stage 12. So, for every Tour de France spectator, hold your kids, hold your pets, and don't cross the road carelessly. And above all, respect the riders. Thank you.